Welcome back to another class. Uh, as you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and today's class is on how to recover deleted files. So if you or your client accidentally deletes files or folders, you know, you delete them, then they flush out their trash folder, um, how do you get those files or folders back? That, that's what we're going to go over today. It is actually uh, very, very easy to do, and most of the time it's very cheap. Uh, we are going to use a piece of software called Recuva, R-E-C-U-V-A, that you can get at recuva.com that is completely 100% free. You just download it, you run it, and, uh, and you get all the, your deleted files back. Uh, give me a second, let me set a few things up, and then we're going to go into how to recover deleted files. Now this is gonna be a pretty easy class. Uh, this is an intermediate level class. Uh, you do need to understand how computers work and be comfortable using Windows uh, before you, you, you start on this class or try to do what we're talking about. But if, if you're comfortable with computers, you're comfortable with Windows, etc., th this class is pretty easy. There, there's not a lot to recovering deleted files. It's just, it's just pretty simple. So the first thing that we have to go over and that you have to understand is how files are stored on your computer. See, you, you have a hard disk, and on that hard disk there's blocks and there's sectors. Basically, there, there, there's, there's portions of the disk where you can save your data to. So when you create a file and you save it on your computer, what happens is imagine you have a hard disk here, and then uh, we have the operating system over here. This isn't exactly how it works. This is more just uh, trying to get your mind around how it works. So if you're a super uber geek, you know what's going on. But, it, but if, if you're just getting into data recovery, just, just, just follow me on this. So you have a hard drive. You have where your data is stored. And then you have the operating system and all the software programs like Word, Excel, uh, Photoshop, or whatnot. So you create a, a document in Word. So you're over here in the operating system with, with Word, and you create a document. What happens is when you save the document, the operating system goes to the hard drive. It, it takes out a portion of the hard drive or finds a portion of the hard drive that's big enough to save your document in, and then it puts your document in that space. It then creates within the operating system a pointer to, to where the, this space is. So basically, when you save a document, two things happen. The first thing that happens is you actually save it to the hard drive. So the, so the computer saves it to the hard drives. But then also the operating system creates a pointer in the operating system to that document. So you know how you go to My Documents and there's all the, those, uh, those, those, those documents in there. Well, when you double click on one of those links, uh, uh, the, the document pops up. Those little those, those icons that you see are pointers to the document on the hard drive. So what happens when you delete a file, so you've saved it, so you save the document, it goes into this space, um, and then you create a pointer. All the, the computer does is the computer, when you delete a document, when you empty the, the trash can or this recycling can or whatever it's called now, it doesn't actually delete this document. What it does is it deletes the pointer to the document. So the operating system, all it does when you delete a document, empty it out of the trash can, is it deletes the pointer. So the, the computer no longer recognizes where that document is stored. The reason it does this is because as soon as it deletes the pointer, then if the computer needs space on the hard drive, it can overwrite this document with another document. So if, while this pointer is here, while this pointer is here, the operating system protects this document from being overwritten. When you delete the, the file, all that happens is the pointer is deleted so that the operating system no longer protects the file uh, from being overwritten. But listen to what I'm saying. I am saying that it, it no longer protects the file from being overwritten. That doesn't necessarily mean that the file will be overwritten. So the next time you create a document on the hard drive, it may create the next document in a different space, and you create a third document, and that goes into a different space, and you create a fourth document, and that goes into a different space. Well, maybe on the sixth document, the operating system decides it needs a space that had been, been used before, and that's when 
it creates a new document up here. But until the document that was there before is overwritten, it, it still exists. So, basically all, all the, the software that we're going to do does is all it does is rec recreates the pointers. So what happens is imagine you deleted this document, deleted it, so then the pointer goes away. All that happens is the pointer to the document gets deleted. Well, you run this Recuva software. It will scan your hard drive looking for files and folders that don't have pointers to them. It will then find this document and then within, within Recuva, basically it will say, do you want to recreate the pointer to this file? Do you want to recover this file? If you do, you click yes and you recover it. And so it's, it's, it's that simple, it's that easy. When you delete a file or folder in a Windows environment, and actually almost any operating system environment, all that gets deleted is the pointer to the, to the file or folder or the index to the file or folder, not the file or folder itself. As long as the file or folder does not get overwritten by something else, uh, then you can use a recovery piece of software to get it back. And it's really simple, free, cheap, easy, etc. The only time this does not work is A, if the file got overwritten. So if you delete a file and then you wait a month, um, you install some, some software, you, you save more stuff, well, the chances are that file will get overwritten over that period of time or if you use secure deletion software. Uh, you know, the secure shredding, uh, document shredding software that you can download for your computer now. So if you want your files to be securely deleted, well, when you securely delete one of those files, if you use secure, secure deletion, it actually does delete the file itself. So it not only deletes the pointer, but then it sh basically shreds digitally that file so it can never be recovered again. So if the file gets overwritten, you cannot recover it, or if the file is, is shredded because you use a, one of these pieces of software, then it cannot be recovered. Most people, th this, is, this is not a big issue, so basically all you need to do to recover deleted files or folders is to run a piece of software like Recuva, which is free, or win undelete or such, and you can get your files and folders back real easily. Now, before I go into a demonstration on how to recover the deleted files, we have to do the obligatory warnings. Warning. Warning. Yeah. Um, so, the, the, the first warning that we have to talk about is how you are actually going to run your data recovery software. So, you download and install Recuva or you download and install WinUndelete. Did you notice a problem or a possible problem with what I said? So, you have documents or folders that you've deleted on your computer, so only the pointer was deleted. Well now, if you download and install a piece of software, don't you risk overwriting those documents, those files and folders? And the, the answer is yes. If you actually have the hard drive in the computer, you, you know, you boot up the computer like normal, you download Recuva and you run it, simply by downloading and installing the Recuva or whatever recovery software, you risk the chance of, of, of deleting something important. I mean, you, you, you risk the chance. Um, I have to tell you this because you might all get up all in arms if I don't tell you this. I would not worry about this, and I generally did not worry about this. Um, there is the possibility by installing a small piece of software like Recuva that you are going to overwrite deleted files. I wouldn't worry about it. If you are worried about it, then what you need to do is you need to pull the hard drive out of the computer, and you need to scan that hard drive from another computer. We're going to go into how to do that in other classes. Uh, we're not going to talk about that now. We're just going to show you how to, how to run Recuva uh, on just your average computer. But if you're really worried about having a file overwritten, then basically as soon as you realize the, the file or folder has been deleted and you need to, get, need to get it back, then you need to stop using the computer entirely, basically pull the plug out of the back. Don't do anything. Hell, don't even shut it down. Just pull the plug. Just stop the computer just right where it is. Then pull the hard drive out of the system and run the scan using a different computer. 
Again, we're going to go into that in another class. That's, that's, that's its own topic. That's its own kettle of fish. So the big warning is yes, if you use a recovery piece of software and you actually install that onto the computer that you're trying to recover data from, you, 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 you risk the chance of overwriting the data. Uh, the, the next two uh, warnings uh, really go to if you have clients. So if you're, if you're doing recovery for a client's computer. The first thing is realize that a lot of these, uh, these computer hard drives now are, are really, really big. Uh, like the, the computer hard drive, uh, one of the computer hard drives that I have in my, my computer is a two terabyte hard drive. So when you run this recovery software, although it's simple, although it's easy, although it's a cakewalk, if you're trying to scan two terabytes of storage, it's gonna take a long time. So back in the day, when I first started doing the data recovery and we had 20 gig hard drives, eh, I don't know what it took, 10, 20 minutes, maybe an hour, no big deal. If you're scanning a two terabyte hard drive, just realize that it's not difficult to do, but it may take an atrocious amount of time. So, so just keep that in mind. So if you have a client, like if you have a small shop or if you're going to a client site and you think, oh, I'll just easily recover the data. Yes, you may easily recover the data, but if you're billing out at hundred bucks an hour and it takes six hours simply to scan that hard drive, um, you may have an unhappy client. And that brings us to the last point with warnings if you're dealing with clients, is a lot of clients will ask you to, to, to put the data that you recover on like CDs or DVDs depending on how much data they have, that, that, that might not be feasible. This might be a good upsell on selling them an external hard drive or such. So, you know, if somebody brings, brings you a two terabyte hard drive and they wiped out all their, their iTunes videos or such, when you recover those iTunes videos, I mean, that might be 100 gigs of, 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 of videos um, that you've recovered. So be very careful if, if they ask you to put it onto DVDs or CDs. Before you say yes to that, make sure you find out how much data you're actually bringing back. Because if, if you're bringing back, you know, 100 gigs of data, it is going to take you know, two days to burn that to, to CDs or DVDs. So, uh, so just keep that in mind. And with that, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the computer now. I'm actually going to download and install Recuva, so you can you can see how to download and install it. And then I will run it, and then I will bring back a couple of files, and you'll see how easy this is. So now I'm going to show you how, how to download and install Recuva and then use Recuva to, uh, to restore your, your deleted files or folders. So we're, we're at Google, my homepage now. Now in order to download Recuva, you just go to www.recuva.com, R-E-C-U-V-A.com. And then we come to the, the, the download site. Now all we need to do is click on download. And uh, this is free, although it's asking for a little money. It would like you to, to pay something, but it is free. You just click on the alternate download, uh, download latest version. Uh, save it. And now we run it. So I'm on Windows 7, so of course it's giving me a little um, questions and, then, and next I agree yeah the normal program files yeah do you want desktop shortcuts automatically check this is the one um, I would say you should be concerned install optional Yahoo toolbar uh, don't install that unless you actually want a Yahoo toolbar. This will install a toolbar into Internet Explorer or into Firefox, and I just don't want to do that. So install, and then now you just run Recuva. So it's asking to, to run Recuva, so click Next. Uh, we'll just go for, for pictures, so let's see what pictures are on the hard drive. Uh, where are, are, do you think the files are located? I have three hard drives on this computer, so I don't want to scan all of those hard drives. So we'll just say C. Next. Uh, now, now this gives you the option of something called a deep scan. So there's a quick scan and a deep scan. This is a lot like uh, you know antivirus software where they have a quick scan and a full scan. 
basically the quick scan will will try to find the the files or folders that are easiest to find uh, a deep scan will take a lot longer but it has a better chance of being able to recover files and folders so it really depends on what you want to do um, I normally just try to do the quick scan first and if that doesn't work I go back and do the deep scan later as you can see it says uh, you know if you have a large hard drive it can take an hour or more to run the scan so we'll click to start it's now running the scan and so uh, we'll switch to advanced mode up here so we can see things like previews um, we scroll down we can see oh here's a here's a picture that I deleted one of those click here to watch video pictures uh, so if I wanted to recover that that would be easy to recover uh, there's a lot of these gifts that I've deleted over time um, that I could recover let's scroll down uh, here's an old banner for one of the advertisements that I could recover so all I need to do in order to recover this picture if I want to recover this picture is I just right click on it I say recover highlighted I just tell it where to recover it so I'll just tell it the desktop to make life easier and click OK uh, yes there recovery then uh, just minimize this I bring the picture over. This is the picture that I just recovered. I double click. And there we go. Now this picture has officially been recovered. So this picture that you're looking at right now was deleted. It was gone. I could not access it in any way. I used Recuva to, to find it again and then to, to recover to recover it. So that's all you need to do to, to recover um, deleted files or folders. Uh, depending on what software you use, of course there are lots of different options and, and drop-down boxes, etc. So I, I'm not going to go through a lot with Recuva itself because it, it really depends on what version you're using, what, what type of software. But basically all of the recovery software out there will scan your computer for these deleted files. It will give you the option to, to, to be able to bring them back. And as long as they're not, not too damaged, uh, then you can just you can recover them very easily and go about your business. So, uh, so let me close all of this and we'll go back out to the real world. So that's all it takes to recover deleted files. Uh, like I showed you, the, the computer normally does not actually delete the file or folder. It simply deletes the index within the operating system to the file or folder. So you use a piece of software like Recuva, which is free, or WinUndelete, which is $50, or some other piece of software to simply go in, it scans your hard drive for files and folders that don't have pointers to them, and, and then it, it asks you basically if you want to recreate the, the pointer. So that, that's all it takes to, to recover the file or folder. Remember, if you or your client uh, deletes a file or folder accidentally, um, the first thing you need to do is stop using that computer. The best practice is literally to pull the plug out of the back of the computer, then take out the hard drive, hook the hard drive up to a different computer, and run the scan that way. That is the best practice because that way you no longer have the operating system doing anything on, on the hard drive, which may overwrite files or folders on the hard drive. That again is the best practice, I'm giving you that warning because it is the best practice, etc. I don't want to get sued. That's not really how we do it in the real world. It really is normally fine. As long as you, you just stop using the computer, stop downloading stuff, stop saving stuff, don't try to install any software. Just stop using it. At that point, download Recuva onto, onto the computer you need to recover the, recover the files or folders on. You know, Install it and run it from there. And, and most of the time, that, that is completely fine. You really shouldn't have any issues. Uh, and then, and then that, that's it. Uh, this, uh, if you're doing data recovery, if you're, if you're a consultant or you're a small computer shop, doing data recovery like this is generally an easy $100 to $200. Um, and people are very happy to pay. People are always very happy to pay for data recovery. Though the one thing that you have to keep in mind if, if you're a consultant or a recovery shop is remember, uh, this is a simple process, but the larger the hard drive and the more data there is to recover, the longer this process can take. Um, doing more sophisticated data recovery, sometimes we literally had a hard drive running 
in its little box doing data recovery for anywhere between 24 to 36 hours. There's nothing complicated about it. There's nothing sophisticated about it. It just took a really long time to run the scans. So, so just keep that in mind, you know, if you're going to a client's site or if, if, the, if they need the data back like right now, it just may, may take a while. Of course, if, you, if you're a client or, or for your clients, the, 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 best, the, the, the best defense against data recovery is a good backup system. Remember, if you have a good backup system, then you don't have to, to worry about data recovery and you don't have to worry about overwriting files. You don't have to remember or worry about, about any of this. So, so of course, the, 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 the number one thing either you or your client should have is a good backup system. If your backup system doesn't work or it fails, then you can use this, uh, what, what we taught you today in order to uh, recover your deleted files. So I'm Eli, the computer guy. This was recovering deleted files uh, on a Windows computer. I look forward to seeing you at the next class. So, <laughs> you know, I was over there. I, I was editing this, uh, this little video class on the computer. I was going through, watching myself, and I realized I realized I had not talked about one very, very, very important error that can happen in data recovery. And if you've been in the, the computer field for a while, you know about these errors and you know how, how horrible and how, what a pain in the butt they can be. It is the infamous ID10T error. And you can get ID10T errors in data recovery. And, uh, and if you're a consultant or if you're, if you're a professional computer person and you're recovering files uh, for clients, you need to be careful, i.e. 10T errors. So here's the problem, and here's what can come up and what the i.e. 10T error is, is that, um, you know, this, this data recovery software, <laughs> it only recovers data that's actually deleted. So, uh, so if your client accidentally moved a file or folder or document to a different place and forgot about it or they did it accidentally or whatever they just they, they, they saved it in the wrong spot well I don't care if the data recovery software you buy cost you two thousand dollars it's not going to find lost data if it's not actually deleted so um, so if you can't find the files or folders you're looking for using data recovery software, you may just do a normal, a normal search on that computer and look for the files or folders. Uh, you might do a search, like if they're looking for documents, do a star.doc search, or uh, if they're looking for pictures, star.jpg search. They may have saved the document or the picture uh, with a different name than they were thinking. They accidentally saved it with a different name. I have seen this in the real world. Uh, I have a little less hair because of this in the real world, is where people think they deleted the file or folder, or they assume that they deleted the file or folder, and no, really, they just moved it somewhere else, or they named it some other stupid name, etc. So, uh, so for your own, for your own good, uh, if you're, if, when you're starting a data recovery process on a computer that still works, is still functional, the first thing that you may want to do is, is just do a search of the hard drive for, for the documents or folders that you're looking for and also go into the trash or the recycle bin or whatever it's called and make sure it's not there. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, you might want to do this first because I have seen this in the real world and it's just, you don't know what it's like to, to, to run a data recovery process for 24 hours or 48 hours only to find out that the file wasn't actually so, uh, so just be careful of the ID 10T errors, and uh, again, I'll, I'll see you at the next class.